Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to my viewers from around the world near and far, and especially here in the state of Vermont. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hesaba House Church Ministry. Welcome. If you're joining me for the first time, I pray that you will be blessed by the word that you hear today from the word of the living God. I also pray that during this time, that you would take this moment as we come into the holy presence of the living God, that you will be enlightened by his presence through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. This is a bilingual ministry. I pray that you will be blessed today. Bienvenidos a todos. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamona Guadalupe. Este ministerio culto viene de las promesas de Dios. Yo oro en este día que sea bendecido con la palabra que el Señor tiene para ti. Vamos con este momentito. Vamos a ir para la escritura. El libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 22, versículo 16. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 16. And the word reads, I, Jesus, have sent my, I'm Jesus, am coming soon. My reward is with me. I am I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. This is the word of the living God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Beloved, today is a trying time for all people around the world, different nations, tongues, and languages and cultures. As we gather together into the holy, holy presence of the living God, we remember that the God that we, that I am preaching to you today is the living God that created all things. Let's take this moment and read from the book of Psalm, chapter 99. Vamos para libro de los Samuel, capítulo 99, y la palabra dice, and the word says, the Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the chariots. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exhausted over all nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established in equ equities. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. As so the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron was among his priests. Samuel among those who call on his name. They call on the name of the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of clouds. They kept his stature and his decree he gave them. The Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God. Though you punished their misdeed, and sought the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. Let's go into prayer. Blessed Father, as we stand before your holy, holiest, holiest place, and we have entered into your presence, and our Lord Jesus Christ sits at your right hand, I ask of you, Blessed Father, then let the words that I speak and let everything that comes out of my heart be pleasing to you. And let it be, blessed Father, that your people from around the world, nation, tongues, and culture, and tribes, that you will give them understanding of who you are, that you are the kings of kings and lords and lords, and you are the gods of God of all things, blessed Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. That you give them understanding, open up their eyes, open up their hearts and their ears and understand them. Give them wisdom, knowledge, that they will know who you are and that they will reveal you. Blessed Father, God Almighty, Jehovah, 
Forgive us for all our sins and our trespasses against you. Blessed God, Jehovah, in the name of Joshua, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lord and Lord, the kings of kings, the mighty God, Jesus, our Savior of the world, of all nations, tribes, and language. There is no other king and savior. It is Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father, in the name of Jesus. Glorify yourself today. Amen. Today is a trying time. It is a time that all of us, regardless of what tribes and nations you're from, we come together, we give God thanksgiving and glory. Yes, there's a lot of things that is happening. There's many places right now in um, Afghanistan that had this horrible earthquake that hundreds of people have perished. There is the war in Ukraine. We uplift that the war will subside. There's a war now in Israel with the Pakistanians. We pray that the war will subside. We pray for nations around the world like China and Russian and North Korean and Latin American country, including the United States and Canada. And we uplift in prayer for peace for the islands of Taiwan, Japan, and the Philippines in the name of Jesus Christ. That no one, no one would uplift walls against one another. But let it be that they remember, that we remember that God is God, is a God of justice, is a God of peace. So we pray at this time. Too many lives are being lost around the world. But I come to tell you, to reassure you that God is God, just like the book of Psalm. I just finished reading from Psalm 99. We come and we uplift our Lord and give him thanksgiving. Yes, tragedies is happening. Earthquakes is happening, tornadoes, hurricane, fire, and flood, beloved. But God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne. Yes, he knows what is happening. I come to give you the word to encourage you to stay faithful with the Lord Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, do not lose faith. Do not lose hope because God is still sitting on the throne. He is King of King, Lord of Lord, God of God. Of all things, let the earth, like it says in the book of Psalm, that we come before him and give him praises and thanksgiving. So, beloved, yes, it's happening around the world, but you stay faithful to God, beloved. As we go on, last week I had spoken to you about the book of um, Exodus, the Hebrew text about Exodus, Moses with Jehovah. When Jehovah God gave the laws to the people and the promise that he has promised to Abraham and it was being fulfilled through Moses. But God wants you to understand that there is a new covenant that he has established, that he has promised from the very beginning to Abraham all the way through all the prophets and all the leaders that has been fulfilled. Jesus Christ is the new covenant. Jesus Christ came to fulfill that it was promised to the people of Israel. Let's go to the book of um, Hebrew. It's in the New Testament. The New Testament, the book of Hebrew. And the word reads, this is the word from chapter 8 in the book of Hebrew in the New Testament, in the Greek Testament. Vamos para el libro de los Hebreo, capítulo 8, versículo 7. Let's go to the book of Hebrew, chapter 8, verse 7. And the word reads, For if there have been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sore for another. But God found fault with the, fault with the people and said, the day are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel, with the people of Judah. I will not be like, it will not be like the covenant that I made with the ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. 
declares to, faithful to my covenant and turn away from them, declared the Lord. This is the covenant that I would establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my Lord into their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, for I will I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading. What is a covenant? What is a covenant? Nations and nations that make covenants in the past and in the present to this day. Kings and other kings with the allies, they made covenants. But in those covenants, there is circumstances, there are rules and regulations to follow. Anyone that violates those that covenant that two people have made, or a nation, or a king, or individual, or in the marriage, anyone that violates, they will be held responsible. Many attorneys make covenants with their clients that I will defend you in your case. I will stay faithful to you to help you along the way. When there's a business partner, there is a covenant that is done. Business partner, uh, male or female together or vice versa, when they make a covenant and they go into business, there's certain conditions that you have to follow. So though sometimes people break those covenants or they sell out, they say, I don't want to no longer be in this covenant. So here is Jehovah God has made a new covenant. And that new covenant is Jesus Christ to everyone, everyone, that they will know who God is, the creator. And it wasn't like the first covenant because the people couldn't keep up with the covenant and that disappointed God. Because of God's mercy and love, he made a new covenant that he will put the covenant I remember it into their minds and into their heart. That it is, what it is, is the Holy Spirit of the living God. Those who receive Jesus Christ, those who know, who gets to know, and will bring remembering into who God is, is through the Holy Spirit that has been promised through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the new covenant. He came to fulfill what it was done in the past Jesus fulfilled that. He shed his blood on the cross, beloved. And if you have not read the Hebrew text, the book of Exodus, the Old Testament, Exodus gives you an understanding who God is and how faithful he is. God does not break his, his covenant. We human beings break covenants with God. God is a God of justice. In those covenants, there's a condition, beloved. God is the God that he will never deviate. But what he did, he gave us Jesus to fulfill that covenant. A covenant is something of, 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 of an agreement between two people or a nation. And, it's, and in that covenant, there is understanding. There is a you know, condition to follow. In the old times, kings and nations, when they will break their covenants, they will kill each other. But not with God, not through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ have entered into that covenant to fulfill that was given in the past. Those who have received Jesus Christ, that's what is very important for us to receive Jesus Christ because it is the new covenant. Did the people from the past, when they broke the covenant, were God pleased with them? Absolutely not. So how much more important that Jesus gave his life 
and shed the blood for us that we have entered into a covenant and we deviate from that covenant. Do you think that God is going to be pleased with us? In other words, we're crucifying Christ all over again. So beloved, he wants you to have this understanding how important to come into this covenant to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because, beloved, there is no Savior, no other than Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, God has opened, Jehovah God has opened the gate for all nations, different nations. And it's up to you. Jesus is the high priest under Melchizedek. Well, Melchizedek, the Haiti have any family? He was the high priest that when he gave Abraham, I mean, Abraham gave Melchizedek 10% because Jehovah God was with Abraham and Melchizedek, the king of Solomon. He saw the blessing that Jehovah God gave. So Jesus Christ is in the position of Melchizedek, the son of the living God, Jesus, Joshua, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. That's who he is, Jesus Christ. And those who refuse to receive Jesus Christ, the son of Jehovah, the son, the, the son that created all things and all nations, every human being on this earth, that's who the son is. Jesus Christ, and there's no other. This new covenant, Jesus came to fulfill that covenant by shedding the blood for you and I. Yes, beloved. And those who have received Jesus Christ and turn away later on, if the old covenant, the people when they turn away, beloved, God held them responsible. How much more would it be when we turn away from a loving, just God, a God of peace, a God of justice, the God that created all things? You have the honey that you take the honey, you take the apple that you eat, you take the trees, the palm trees, you see the oceans, the water that you drink, the air that you breathe. That is the God that I'm preaching about. Jehovah God. Through Jesus Christ, everything was created through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So beloved, Jesus says that he's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and there's nobody else, beloved. And he wants you to come to him. He has an open arm. Come to me. Yes, you have sinned. Yes, you have done bad. Come to me and I will forgive your sin. So beloved, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus, are you prepared? Are you prepared to receive the Holy God? And he will change your heart. He will help you along the way because the reason why this new covenant is, is that you to bring you back into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God has rules and regulation to make us holy like a living God. Not a God of violence, not a God of war, not a God that, that brings sickness to your body, not the God that will separate you from your family. No, the God that I'm speaking to is a God of holiness, a God that wants to hold you and let you know that I love you because he is love. God, Jehovah is a God of love. He gave his only begotten son for you and I, beloved to save us from our disgraceful, disgusting sin, beloved. He wants to keep you holy. He's calling on you today. The high priest on the Melchizedek, the prince of peace, the new covenant, which is Jesus the Christ. And according to the Hebrew text, from the New Testament, chapter 7, from chapter 6 to chapter to the end, to chapter, what is this chapter? It goes up to chapter 11 and um, chapter 14. And it talks about 
No, kiss to that. The high priest, which is Jesus Christ. The new covenant that Jehovah made with us. So if we turn away from Jehovah God, it is difficult for us to come. Those who turn away, it is difficult to bring them back. But with God, nothing is impossible, beloved. He's a God of love. He's a God of peace. He's a God that he cares for each and every one of us. Do you think that God is pleased when we murder one another? The image of the most high God? No, beloved, he's not. He wants you to come to him. Jesus says, come to me, my yoke is light. Those who are downtrodden, those who are weighted down with all these things that is happening around the world, beloved. He wants you to come to him. He's woeing you with his love. Jesus is kind. Jesus is gentle. His yoke is light. Come to him, beloved. Yes, many of you are suffering, have lost loved one through this war. And do you think that God doesn't grieve? That's why the book of Exodus, the, the Hebrew text Exodus, it shows how God's love is towards humanity. He grieves. Do you think that God is pleased when people perish, when they are killed or murdered? No, beloved, he's not. He feels your pain. He knows you. He's looking for you to come to him, to cry to him. He wants you to come to him, beloved. And if you come to the Lord and says, help me, you cry to him, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, he will come for you, beloved. That is a guarantee. There is no king. There is nobody else in this world that will come for you during these difficult times. Many of you are homeless. Many of you have lost your home through flood, earthquake, fire, hurricane, tornadoes, and earthquake. Oh, beloved, but God is there. He wants you to come to him and call upon him because he is God. The high priest, Jesus Christ, the new covenant that Jehovah God established for the people of all nations, tongue, tribes, culture, nationality. He's a God of justice. Yes, he's a God of justice. He will do away with all the crimes that is happening. Any injustice, God will deal with it, beloved. Yes. That's the God that I preach to you. God of love, but God has standard. He's a God of justice and we should fear him. We worship him. We give him thanksgiving because who? that's who he is. There is no one else, beloved. There's no one else. So beloved, many of you are wondering what's going to happen next. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, he's calling upon you. He's woeing you. I love you, beloved. I'm here for you. He cares for you. If you haven't received Jesus, Joshua, the high priest, the holiest, the holiest that he had entered, and we come to the holiest and holiest in the presence of God. You say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins and my trespass. As soon as you say those words, he becomes your king, your Lord, your God, your healer, your comforter, your prince of peace, beloved. That's who he is. Oh, yes. That's who he is. Let's pray. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray in behalf of your people. You know the pains that many are going through, but we still uplift you in prayer. We give you thanksgiving and blessing to you, Holy God. Blessed Father, you know what all things that is happening around the world. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you glorify yourself. And those who have received you this moment, I pray, blessed Father, that you guide them and protect them from the evil one. Those who have confessed and received Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And I speak to all nations, including for the state of Vermont, United States, and those around the world. 
in Jesus' precious name. Protect our children, Father, from any harm from the hands of adults. I pray for all nations' leaders, blessed Father, that they will humble themselves and ask for forgiveness. I pray for the President of the United States that you give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he'll be able to minister to the people of his of this country and even to, Father, to help those in other countries, Father. So I pray for the world leaders that they will take care of their people and do what is right and just in the name of Jesus Christ, the High Priest, Jehovah God, Yeshua, the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God be with you and the love of God continue to be around you. Remember, continue to pray for peace and continue to pray for those, even those who have done you wrong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hasta la semana que viene. Que sea bendecido. Amen.